Okay, today's September 9th, 2015, and um, I was going to make a video on something else, but I decided to do it on this. I've, I've, uh, I've picked up this book at the library the other day, What is Relativity by Jeffrey Bennett. Um, I'm going to st I always read books on relativity. I've been reading these since for the last 20 years, books like this, and I um, um, picked this one up at the library. It's got a lot of nice... It's got a lot of nice pictures in it. Um, that's one of the things I like, diagrams and stuff. If, if a book has lots of good diagrams and stuff, I'm more likely to read it. Um, so it got a good typeface, too. I like. It looks like a good readable book, so I'm going to... I'm going to reread it. Uh, not reread it. I'm going to read it for the first time. I mean, I've read plenty of books like this, but um, I'm, I'm reading this one for the first time. And what I think I'm going to do is, after every chapter or something, I'm going to go through and pick it apart as I as I go through it and kind of pick the book apart and kind of to highlight sort of places where I think uh, things are I don't know what you would call it where where I points where I disagree or something or points where I think errors are creeping in or where I think it's uh, not 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 where I think the author is mispresenting this I am um, Points, points where it's being presented without, I, I don't know, I'm just going to go through and bring up points. It's its not that, you know, I, I, this, uh, it's, it's nothing against this author. I'm sure he's hes very good and everything. He's well qualified. Who's the author? It says, Jeffrey Bennett, winner of the 2013 American Institute of Physics Science Communication Award, holds a BA in biophysics from the University of California, San Diego, and an MS and PhD in astrophysics from the University of Colorado or Boulder. He is the lead author of best-selling textbooks in astronomy, astrobiology, mathematics, and statistics, and has written numerous award-winning books for the general public and children. So, um, looks like he's well qualified. I've, I've never heard of him before, but um, that, that, that doesn't mean anything that I've never heard of him before. I'm not. I don't mean that as a slight against him or anything. Um, so this this book was copyrighted. In, or is it? It was a copyright date, 2014. Okay. Um. So. So so anyway, I'm not. I I don't mean this is any kind of attack on this author. I don't even know if I'm gonna actually. I'm sure I'm gonna disagree with something he's he's saying, but it's actually not going to be him saying it. I'm sure he's presenting the ideas of relativity perfectly in a perfectly competent manner. It, it, so it's it's not his presentation or anything that I think is going to be in error. I'm I'm pretty sure just the theory itself. Um, just just because I'm anti-relativity and everything, so I. You know, if I'm if I'm picking apart errors, they're not going to be his error. The author's errors. It's just going to be errors in relativity itself, and he's just presenting it the way it's normally presented. So, um, so so anyway, um, to st the reason I decided to start doing that is I started reading the book and I read the preface. Well, for, first I saw a, I was flipping through here and saw one of the diagrams. I thought, ooh, I want to do a, like it sparked an idea for a video I want to do on on something else. Um, um, so, um, so anyway, I started reading the preface and I, I had, I read enough in the preface to think that I'll, I'll just go ahead and do this sort of a video where I talk about it as I go along. Um, you know, I've, I kind of stopped reading these books a few years ago or something because I pretty much convinced myself that relativity is... Like, well, why keep reading something if um if you don't agree with it and you've already read so much on it, you're convinced. I mean, what's what's another book? What's what's the point of? But the the point is just um don't stop reading. I mean, maybe I am misunderstanding it somehow. But anyway, it's kind of like almost a double checking sort of a thing, like to double check myself. So I'm gonna like go back through. You know, and I've watched videos on, and stuff on YouTube and stuff since I stopped reading these kind of books. But um, and I do occasionally. I, I don't actually read them cover to cover anymore. I still, I, I, I browse them. I would say it's not that I've stopped. 
reading them, I stopped reading them intently, like from cover to cover, from beginning to end. N nowadays, when I do them, I just kind of flip through them like, like this and just look at the diagrams and like pick out paragraphs and stuff and just just kind of picking and choosing instead of going so I, I don't call that reading I call that more like browsing or perusing or something but it's not um you know, anyway I'm always continually educating myself on this is what I'm saying hoping I'm gonna find something something that's gonna make me see the sense of it or something but any anyway let me that this is longer than I wanted to start so uh, the preface what did I what was my impressions in the preface um he talks about his first real exposure to Einstein's theory. He was it uh, in a course he took during his freshman year of college. Um, for, first of all, you know, he says, like everyone else, I'd always heard that relativity was supposed to be really hard, and that 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 gets back to me. That gets back to the thing of you'd always heard that. Who have you, you know? That that's the way relativity is presented it's it's hard and you can't learn it it's it's like it takes a real brilliant mind to harness or understand relativity or whatever and um what why is that the general impression of the public it's because uh, the, the, the the main thing it brought up with me was um you know when i was growing up i'd always heard that i i don't know if it was true or not but i i had always heard that there was like well, there's just a handful of people in the world that actually understand relativity or um and they may I, I think they were referring back to when relativity first came out or something that it was considered so difficult that there were only like one or two or three people in the entire world that understood it's kind of like an urban legend when i was growing up like oh there's only a few people in the world who truly understand relativity because it's so incredibly difficult to master and um to learn it and to understand it that there's only a few people in the world that understand it um so it has that reputation i think i don't think scientists don't do anything to disabuse the public of that notion that relativity is easy relativity is an incredibly simple theory and th this that's 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 the next point about the preface in here um it says i soon realized that its reputation was undue was undeserved Relativity didn't make things harder, it made everything seem sim simpler. Um, at least once you got the hang of it. So, so, and what I mean that to read, what I read that to mean is once you got the hang of it, like, you, you know, it's such an incredible, it's, it's, um, its reputation as being, um, supposedly really hard, it's, re that reputation is undeserved, um, you know, made everything seem simpler, at least once you got the hang of it, um, once you got the hang of it means once you kind of sort of like a suspension of disbelief and you overcame your you overcome your your common sense when you first the reason relativity is difficult in my view when people first understand it it goes against common sense and you know it's wrong the first time you encounter relativity you know it's wrong it, it's it's against common sense and that's that's one of the things that you know is always touted well it is against common sense it's it's against your intuition and that's you know somehow that's what makes it such a brilliant theory because it's so against common sense that it took so long to come up with it and it took like a genius like albert einstein to see the obvious and now now everyone oh it's completely obvious now but it took a it took a genius like albert einstein to to overcome his to be the first one to overcome his common sense and come up with relativity that's that's why relativity is supposedly really hard to learn is because you have to beat down your common sense and your intuition and your you, you beat you have to beat down your common sense and your kind of like your intelligence and your logic and once you once you overcome that once you've jumped once you've gotten over that hurdle of of suppressing your common sense oh well, yeah that, that, so now it's easy you know that's what it means once you get the hang of it once you have overcome your common sense and um you know and he says i suddenly realized that prior to studying relativity i had misunderstood the basic nature of space and time and again i i don't want to give the impression that i'm attacking this author i'm not attacking this author um i, I think i think he's just giving um he he's kind of almost giving the kind of 
what, what I felt when I first encountered relativity too, you know, it, 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 he says, I had misunderstood the basic nature of space and time. Uh, you know, re relativity is a neat theory. It's It's got time dilation and, you know, relativity of simultaneity. Oh, there's no real now and uh, leads to things like black holes and block time and stuff. And it just, it, it's it's a real neat theory. And I'm a science fiction fan. And all, all those concepts, those are cool, y you know, and... um. So, so, you know, you know, it's a neat theory. You, you kind, you, you want it to be true. I would like time dilation to be true, and, and I should put a caveat in there that, you know, asymmetric time dilation may be true, but um, um, you, you want it to be true. If you like science fiction and everything, you want relativity to be true because it's it's neat. It's got some neat ideas and everything, but um. But anyway, uh, he had misunderstood the na basic nature of space and time. Did he? Act, and my when I was reading that, my my first thing that popped up did was did he actually misunderstand the basic nature of space and time before he encountered relativity, or did relativity just present him with a new view of space and time? Um, y you know, relativity does have a different view of space and time, so. Uh, if you're presented with a new view of space and time, does that mean you understand that conflicts with? If your base, if relativity conflicts with the view, your basic like common sense everyday view of space and time, if relativity conflicts with that, does that mean you actually misunderstood the basic nature of space and time, or that uh, you? Uh, you you didn't misunderstand it. You 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 perfectly understood space and time as as common sense says it is. You you understood it that way. Um, you you didn't misunderstand it. Um, you when you adopt relativity, you just take on a new understanding of it and a new uh, uh, like a conflicting view with your previous view. That's not really misunderstanding anything. That's that's a choosing to adopt a different view than you held before. That's that doesn't mean you misunderstood your previous view. Um, you you might just think, well, now that I've got this new view, I realize that my previous view was an error. But that doesn't mean you misunderstood it. It just um, anyway. I'm probably not saying that well, but anyway, um, I I would my my point is I would say when you um. Being an anti-relativist, I would say, when, when you know he had misunderstood the basic nature of space and time prior to studying relativity, I, I would say the review the reverse is true. He understood space and time before relativity, before he began studying it, and then he started studying relativity, and now he now he misunderstands the basic nature of space and time, is, is my point of view. He understood it fine before when you're going with the everyday common sense view of space and time. He understood it. Now he now he has a misunderstanding of the basic nature of space and time. That's that's what relativity is to me is a misunderstanding of the basic nature of space and time. So uh, anyway. Um, so, and, and then the next the next paragraph begins. Within a year, I was teaching some of the ideas of relativity to elementary and middle school children, as part of a summer school I ran for kids, who were who were interested in space and science. And I'm not I'm not laughing at um, I, I'm not laughing at the uh, the author. I'm just it, it's it's the implications of it that within a year, you know. It, Within a year of when he was introduced to relativity, he was teaching it to children, um, to elementary and middle school children. Uh, what's What's funny about that to me is, um, he took he took this during his freshman year of college. He doesn't say that you know he took one course and and then immediately after that he took another course in relativity. Um, he he says came in a course I took during my freshman year of college. So it, I, I have no idea whether this is true or not. This is just I'm kind of reading between the lines. I'm reading that as saying that he only had one course in relativity during his freshman year. 
and within a year, meaning within a year of when he was first exposed to relativity, he's teaching the basic ideas of relativity to elementary and middle school children. Um, so so what, what, what am I laughing about that uh, for? It's, I, I guess, you, you know, I, I guess what I'm laughing about is uh, how, how many semester hours you, you know, if you take us one semester's course, meaning like from August to December, a course in relativity, um, came in a course. He doesn't even say it's actually a course on relativity. It could have just been like an introductory physics course or physics 101 or maybe physics for majors or something. It doesn't actually say it's a theory. It's a class on relativity specifically it just says that it's a course he took during his freshman year which might have like for a week they focused on relativity or something but but let's let's just assume that it was an actual class that was full-time relativity with nothing else just relativity in it you, you know and let, let's let's assume it was a class with a lab in it um so basically a four semester hours four credit hours m meaning you have a four hours of relativity a week um basically you know one hour three times a week plus a lab for four so four hours um let's 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 say it's five months let's let's say the semester i know it's going to be shorter but let's say the semester is five months um let's just say that's 20 weeks so so 20 weeks uh for he's got 80 hours basically the most he could possibly have in that one class would be 80 hours of relativity and, and i'm sure it would actually be more like 40 or something i mean I'm, I'm doing like a liberal I, i'm being like liberal or non-conservative in my estimate it, it's uh say say he got 80 hours in he's he studied relativity for 80 hours and, and then and then he's basically teaching what he learned to school children so um and what 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 i find interesting about that is um i'll, I'll just go on to the next the, the rest of the preface because it, it what i what i'm getting at is is in the next couple of sentences um he was amazed at how readily many of them grasped the key ideas and their ease with the concepts helped me realize a fundamental fact much of the difficulty that most people have with relativity comes about only because it seems to run counter to ideas of space and time that have become deeply ingrained in our minds. For children, for children who have those ideas less deeply ingrained, relativity does not seem quite so strange, allowing them to accept it more easily than adults. Um, s s s um, that's not what I was... Oh, okay. so the part actually—I don't want to read too many much of this because I don't want to get in trouble for copyright laws or something. Um, I don't mean to infringe on copyright here. Um, anyway, he go, I'm not—I'm going to stop quoting directly because I don't want to. He—I may quote one more sentence. Let me find the good sentence. Okay, here's the sentence. An added advantage of this approach, um, meaning the approach, um, anyway, an added advantage of this approach was that it could be done without most of the mathematics that goes with relativity, allowing the students to focus on building a conceptual understanding. So, um, it's it's easier to teach to children, he says, because it's not as difficult to overcome your common sense with children don't have as difficult a time overcoming their common sense as adults do so um and, and he's he's teaching this without mathematics and just totally a conceptual understanding so what what i i guess what i'm actually getting at is part of the criticism i've been getting on some of my things is that um 
you know, you're 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 like you have an eighth grade understanding of relativity, or 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 you're like attacking an eighth grade version of relativity, or or a middle school version, or something, but um, which which kind of actually has nothing to do with the main theory of relativity, because you know, um. You, you know, even if you do destroy, like, the 8th grade understanding or the the conceptual version of it, you're not touching, like, the the core of relativity, which, which is actually what they teach in higher level college courses. But, uh, um, the point, the point is, like, the, the point was with some of these, the, these criticisms that, I'm attacking an eighth grade dumbed down version of it. I don't think that's true. I'm attacking like the core of it. And this this guy is basically he my uh I've always said in response to that criticism is that um relativity is an eighth grade simple idea. It it is the simplest idea in the world. You don't need all that college education to understand it. Um you you don't need that higher level. You can understand relativity on the basic non-mathematical core concepts, the fundamental concepts, without all the mathematics. They are an eighth grade level. Relativity is an incredibly simple theory, which is basically what this guy is saying in his introduction. It's an incredibly simple theory, is my thing. So, so, so my response has been, so what if I'm attacking an eighth grade version that is relativity that eighth grade sort of conceptual version that non-mathematical version that is relativity at its core um, you don't need to go beyond that and if relativity falls apart at that level no amount of higher education is going to repair relativity and make it hang together or make it be it's not go if if at that if at that 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 basic fundamental core level that you can teach to um to children like this guy is doing after just studying relativity for you know one semester himself he's teaching it um that that basic core level if it's flawed at that core level you don't need, it's not going to be repaired if you start studying high, the higher level portion of it that, you know, brings mathematics and everything into it. It's not going to change the fact that at that fundamental level, relativity is flawed. So, so, so I completely disagree with that notion that by destroying an, an eighth grade version of relativity, as if there's more than one version, there's like an ad advanced version and a introductory version, the introductory version is relativity. Anything else on top of that, an advanced relativity, it's the same theory, you're just um, kind of developing it more mathematically or whatever. It's not. It's not it's it, it's it's not changing those core concepts or, or anything so and that that's my whole point after reading this preface it's um and the, i guess i'm um i don't know what my point is i'm just i'm just talking here this this is my initial um point uh, Sort of the point is it's not uh, it's just as this guy is saying that you know I'd always thought it was a harder theory than it was and uh, um, its reputation as being a difficult theory is undeserved and you know there's only a few people in the world who actually understand it. Um, it it's a simple theory and that's basically what this guy is saying. It's so simple that you know I can I can learn relativity in one semester and then. A year later, I'm teaching it to school children and everything. It's it's that simple of a theory. Um, so I'm I'm just reading. I'm looking at the. Um, you know, he he asked why why they enjoyed relativity so much. The most commonly cited reasons were. Um, they appreciated the way relativity opened their minds in new and unexpected ways, and they'd always assumed that relativity was a subject that would be beyond their comprehension, so they were excited to find out that they could actually understand it. So, 
so it makes them feel smarter by by he he found out that children they they have this this impression that it's incredibly difficult which you know that that's its reputation and everything and then you learn it and find out that it's it's an incredibly simple theory so it somehow makes you feel smarter because oh now I understand relativity and such it's so difficult it's so incredibly difficult and yet I can understand it I must be a freaking genius is what it makes you feel like and that, that's that's what he found that's I, I'm not saying that's what it makes me feel like that's what basically what this is saying that you know it's it's got this reputation as being so difficult and and so if if you if you learn it and find out that it's incredibly simple well, I must be a genius because this I must be a genius because this is so incredibly such an incredibly difficult theory and yet I can understand it um so so, so um what's my point there I don't know um so um and what 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 would you, what do you feel when oh I I have finally mastered relativity and then there's you know I'm a genius because I mastered this incredibly difficult subject you know I'm a freaking genius because I mastered this and and then the, there's this other nut named Scott Reeves and these other anti relativists that are coming along and trying to tell me tell me that relativity is incorrect so it can't be incorrect because I understand it and it's an incredibly difficult theory so I'm a genius and then there's this other guy that's telling me it's wrong he's stupid because he doesn't really understand it so so it's it's it, I, I think that's part of another reason why uh, why people or scientists might be so resistant to giving up relativity is because they 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 were like this as children and relativity has this reputation as being difficult and then they learn it and find out that well it's not difficult at all but you know everyone says it is so so if it's so if relativity is incredibly difficult and yet I can understand it and it's so simple to me I must be a genius so so if I'm a genius how can relativity be wrong therefore I'm not going to give it up and I'm gonna fight tooth and nail when some other guy comes along and tells me that relativity's wrong he, he's just stupid because you know I'm a genius so if I'm a genius and I understand relativity and it works how dare you tell me different because you know that would mean if, if relativity is not true that would mean I must be the stupid person and, and the non-genius because I didn't see it and I was taken in by this I, I was kind of fooled by relativity how can that be so is and and then you, the, these kids with that attitude that this guy says they're gonna grow up into scientists like Stephen Hawking and everybody relativity can't possibly be wrong because that would mean I have been duped by a it's it's so incredibly simple but I'm such a genius and I if relativity's wrong I've been duped because I wasn't smart enough to see it that, that it didn't work and yet how can that be because I'm a genius because I understood relativity that that's what it's a circular kind of a thing I, I so um, I'm just seeing what else there is I think you'll find the subject to be both much easier to understand and much more amazing than you expected. So, uh, looking at that, I think that's all I had to say about the preface here. Again, this is What is Relativity by Jeffrey Bennett. And again, I, I, I don't have anything against the author. I don't mean to be sound mocking of the author or anything. Um, now, I don't think there's anything wrong with he, what he was saying. I just think the implications of it are... It, it kind of goes along with some of the things I've been saying, but from the other viewpoint or something. But anyway, so... Um, So, yeah, I, I think that's all. I don't know if I... 
I'm just feeling like there was one other thing I wanted to address, but I'm... Well, there is one other thing I want to say, but I'm not quite sure. I'm trying to think of how to word it. Um, so, so my whole point—not my whole point—but this thing about the children, it's easier to teach it to children because their common sense has become less well ingrained. So it's not quite as difficult for them to overcome their common sense. Um, Relativity does not seem quite so strange, allowing them to accept it more easily than adults. So what does what does that actually say about relativity? It says that um, children, there's no doubt that children are more easily duped than adults. Uh, uh, you can fool kid, you can fool fool children eat more easily than you can adults. Um, you, you can be on the beach and tell kids there's sea monsters out there. Uh, like the Loch Ness Monster or something, and if they trust you, they'll believe you um, with, without any evidence or anything. So that's that could bring up another thing about accepting things on authority from, you know, scientists who are supposedly authoritative on it. We accept relativity based on their authority. But anyway, what does it say when your, your precious theory is more, is more readily accepted by children who are, I suppose it's arguable that children are more easily duped than adults, which I, I, I think it's probably true, but I'm sure there's someone that's going to disagree with me, so let's call it arguable that children are more easily duped. So, but it, but just just take me just take me for the sake of argument that children are more easily duped. What does it say about your theory if 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 it's more easily understood by people who are more easily duped than you are. Uh, um, wh what does that say about your theory? It's, it says that it takes a sucker to believe in relativity, basically, is what that is saying in my viewpoint. It's like it takes a sucker to believe relativity. Uh, um, and, and the way you... Uh, the, the way you get adults to accept relativity is you have to condition them to become suckers to accept your idea. Um, to, to accept your theory, you have to train adults to become suckers or to overcome their, their common sense, which is basically teach them to become suckers and then teach relativity to them. So that you, can, um, you, you, have, to, you have to turn adults into suckers like children. Uh, you, have to, you have to make adults as easily duped as our children in order to, in order to spread your theory. What does that say about your theory? Uh, um, if, if <laughs> anyway, that's that's that, that's that's I guess that's the final thing I wanted to say. It doesn't it doesn't speak well for your theory if um, if it's if your theory is more easily accepted and more easily understood by by people who are more easily duped. Uh, um, that's not a positive thing for your theory. Um, so anyway, that, that's that's my that's that's all my thoughts on reading the preface of this book. Again, I I mean no I I I don't mean this to be any sort of attack against the author. He's not uh, saying anything that's that's not that's not a. Uh, with the mainstream of thought, he's not saying he's not saying anything stupid or, or out of out of line. This he's perfectly in line with the, um, you know, with mainstream ideas on relativity. So I, I don't mean to imply that the author is stupid or attack him in any way. I, I don't even know the person, obviously, so I can't say anything about about him or anything. But he's got good credentials and everything. So, um. So anyway, I'm 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 done with the preface. And then one more thing, I, I don't mean to imply that um, relativity is more. I I don't mean to imply that uh, relativity is 
what, what am I trying to say here? I, I don't mean to imply that relativity is so simple that uh, children are the first to grasp that it's it's true or something. Um, it's it's not a childish theory is what I is what I want to say it's the the point of that preface what I got from the point is that children there it's more easily taught to them because relativity goes against common sense and your intuitive your intuitive common sense understanding of space-time relativity goes against that and you first have to overcome that resistance to it before you can accept relativity and um children it's easier to teach it to children because their common sense isn't isn't as quite so isn't so firmly in place as an adults is so it's harder to overcome that in adults um but but um i i didn't mean to imply that you know relativity relativity is simple but it's it's not like uh I didn't mean children are more likely to master relativity. Is I, I don't even I'm not even sure exactly what I'm getting at, but um, it's um, you, you know you know the the whole point is that children it, it, children pick it up more quickly or something or whatever be, because it's um because their common sense is not quite so developed as an adult's is, and that's what I took from this from this uh preface is what that guy was saying about what he learned from teaching it to kids is that it's easier to teach it to them because they don't have that quite such a strong resistance to it because their common sense isn't quite so well developed as an adult's is um and you know to make sure i'm not misreading or putting words into his mouth that's my interpretation of it but what i offer in support of that is um What I what I offer in support of my interpretation is uh, directly from the a direct quote. Um, I was amazed at how readily many of them grasped the key ideas, many of them being children, and their ease with the concepts helped me realize a fundamental fact. Much of the difficulty that most people have with relativity comes about only because it seems to run counter to ideas of space and time that have become deeply ingrained in our minds. For children whose I who have those ideas less deeply ingrained, relativity does not quite seem so strange, allowing them to accept it more easily than adults, which is basically what I said. And, and that's, in my view, that doesn't speak in favor of relativity. That speaks what sort of a theory it is that it takes a sucker to understand relativity is basically what it is and again i'm an anti-relativist i don't know I've, I've been through all this whole thing for 20 years and you know and that 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 brings up another thing fall on my train of thought that brings up another thing you know this this guy is teaching it after like basically one semester of studying at relativity i've been studying relativity for 20 years um so it can be learned in a in a semester. The the core basic relativity can be learned in a semester, which is basically a you know giving him a liberal dose. It's 80, 80 hours of classroom instruction. It's probably much less than that that you can be taught relativity, but it's basically eighty hours of classroom instruction. Boom, you're out the door and can teach it to other people. Um, so so this guy understands it after that one semester and he, enough that he's passing it on to uh children and everything so you, you know and I, i've been studying this for 20 years and here i am 20 years later uh saying relativity's wrong and everything does that mean i'm incredibly stupid or does it mean i've actually truly understood it and realized see it for what it is um um, so who who's right here? Is it that I don't actually understand relativity, and I never will because I've been attempting to understand it for twenty years, um, or you know, yeah, yes, Scott, that's exactly what it means. That's what we've been saying all along. You're a freaking idiot. We're freaking geniuses because we understand relativity, and you're a freaking idiot because, you know, we can understand it after one, you know, a one semester course, and you can't understand it after 
devoting 20 years of your life to it. So, you know, yes, that means you're stupid. That's exactly what we're saying. Um, and I, I don't buy into that, you know. In, in my other videos, I go into the thing, um, um, the, you know, either I'm stupid, either the people that are teaching it are stupid, or the third possibility is that um, that relativity is incorrect. It, it's not the people, you know, you understand it. Um, you know, the people that agree with relativity understand it. I understand it. And yet relativity is incorrect. And basically, the third possibility is true. Relativity is incorrect. Uh, um, it, it's kind of implicitly acknowledged in the idea of a grand unified theory, which is basically like the holy grail of science is what they're searching for is the grand unified theory that will unite quantum mechanics and relativity that is basically an admission that relativity in its current form is incorrect it is wrong it's relativity is incorrect that's basically an acknowledgement that relativity does not work so so when you say well i'm stupid because i don't understand it and i i you know it's taken me 20 years and I still don't understand it. That's not true. I do understand relativity. The people that uh, teach relativity, they understand it as well. But that doesn't mean, you know, I, I'm stupid or they're stupid. It's not an either or. It's that we're both smart and we both understand it. And we both agree that relativity is incorrect. Um, so, so it's it's the third possibility. It's not that I'm stupid and don't understand it. It's not that they're stupid because they understand it. It's it's relativity is acknowledged. It's implicitly acknowledged, if not explicitly acknowledged in various places, that relativity is incorrect. You know, for relativity and quantum mechanics, it's it's incorrect. Relativity is incorrect. It's implicitly acknowledged. So um, I, I don't know what the big deal is calling, you know, I'm the idiot because I don't understand it. it. So maybe maybe that's true. Maybe I am the idiot and don't understand it, but I don't think it is. But um, I would think I could get the benefit of the doubt because it is acknowledged that relativity is um, not correct. It's it's incorrect. Um, so we'll prove that. What, what's your proof? Well, my proof for that is the quest for the grand unified theory. Uh, um, relativity and quantum mechanics are incompatible, therefore one or the other or both are incorrect. Um, and relativity will need to be modified to fit into quantum mechanics, or quantum mechanics will be need to be modified. Um, I, I can't name it offhand, but I've, I've read people that say relativity will need to be modified. The, the, the grand unified theory will have a version of relativity that is not the version it is right now. I, I can't point you to specifically who is saying that. It's not quacks that are saying it. It's re some well-respected people that have said it. I've read that in other books. I just can't name them offhand. And just because I can't cite them off the top of my head doesn't mean that, you know, I'm incorrect in what I'm saying. It, it's re respected people have said that. And I, um, um, so, so relativity is incorrect. So let, let's not get into... Oh, you're stupid because you don't understand it. No, I know relativity is incorrect. I'm just, I'm just trying to say it's. I, why am I going into this? I've said this in other videos, but um, you, you know, the, the, it's the the view is relativity will need to be modified to become compatible with quantum mechanics and to unify. To come up with a grand unified theory, relativity will meet, need to be modified. Um, the, the disagreement is, I think relativity needs to be completely torn down and thrown away. Um, where, whereas the other guys think it just needs to be modified a little bit. So it, it's not that there's a disagreement that relativity is incorrect. It's just a disagreement in what needs to be done with it. Does it need to be modified or does it need to be thrown out? And that brings up another thing. What I should say is, you know, I just said relativity needs to be thrown out, but it might not need to be thrown out. One of the things, the, the common thread I've been saying in all my things, in all my so-called rants, I've never been saying that uh, time dilation 
certain I've, I've never been saying that certain aspects of relativity are not correct such as time dilation and everything what I what the whole thing I've been saying is that ace that symmetric or the symmetric time dilation or the reciprocity aspect of relativity uh, is what is going to uh, at the very least, things are not reciprocal. There may be time dilation. So in that sense, relativity, even from my viewpoint, probably will still be around. It just won't be symmetric or reciprocal as relativity in its current form requires. Uh, um, so and even then it won't be relativity because um things will no longer be relative because as i've been saying the alternative to relativity is absolute geocentrism an absolute reference frame um you know maybe an absolute reference frame if not absolute geocentrism so you know absolutism an absolute reference frame is incompatible with relativity so it won't even be relativity anymore even though it still may have time dilation and um, I'm going to say length contraction, but I still don't believe length contraction will be a part of it. But, um, you know, so there, st there may still be certain aspects of relativity that will be retained even in my, my thing that, rel that relativity needs to be completely trashed, but it, it's possible that, uh, there'll still be time dilation. My, my whole beef has been, all along, if you listen to my videos, my whole beef with relativity has been the reciprocity, the, the, sim, the symmetrical requirement of relativity. Relativity um, cannot... Time dilation and length contraction, if they actually exist, are completely asymmetric. They cannot be reciprocal. There can be no symmetry. It, it, it is completely asymmetric if those things actually exist. And that's that's been my whole thing. That that's why relativity relativity is wrong because the symmetrical the reciprocity as, aspect is is its downfall. It doesn't work. It leads to physical impossibilities and logical contradictions, such as the twins paradox. You know, it's the twins paradox. Oh, we can resolve that, relativists. We can resolve that. No, you can't because you can make it more general than biological twins. The twins paradox still remains. It just, um, th there's still a twins paradox problem uh, applied to light, like, like the, um, the photon mapping problem, as I've, as I call it, and the no photon is not and stuff. Reciprocity doesn't work. So that, that, that's, that's, that's my whole thing against relativity. It's pseudoscience and the reciprocity doesn't work. It, can only be asymmetric. Things in the universe, time dilation, length contraction, they can only be asymmetric, and there there must be an absolute reference frame. So that's my two things with it. Um, so I'm, I'm not actually against time dilation and length contraction. I'm, a, I'm against the, the reciprocity of it. And reciprocity can't, re relativity can't survive without the reciprocity. So anyway, now I'm truly done.